Welcome to Appendix C. This is about designing uh, databases. <clears throat> um, we'll be studying mostly in this chapter what's known as the entity relationship model and the components of that model. We'll look at how relationships between entities or objects we're interested in are defined and improved and incorporated into the database design process and how entity relationship diagram components affect database design and implementation and then the real-world database design uh, often requires the uh, re reconciliation of conflicting goals <clears throat> so um, the basis of entity uh, of uh, database modeling is the entity relationship uh, diagram and that's going to depict the databases basic components entities attributes and relationships an entity refers to uh, a table of value, a table of records, not to a single record, but to a table that has many records in it. An attribute is a characteristic of the table that we're interested in tracking. Um, a required attribute must have a value and cannot be left empty. An optional attribute does not require a value and of course it can uh, be left empty. A domain is a set of possible values for a given attribute and identifiers are one or more attributes that uniquely uh, identify each attribute. So again a data model is something we do to help us uh, understand how to organize our data in efficient and uh, non-redundant manner. We want to minimize redundant information in our databases. And so the data modeling technique we're studying that uses entity relationship diagrams will help us to accomplish that. And again, this entity relationship diagram is part of what's known as entity relationship modeling uh, which is a technique for documenting the relationships between entities in a uh, database environment. Again, an entity is an object that we want to uh, record data about. Um, it can be a person, place, thing, or event, and we store these uh, objects that we're interested in as records in a table. So a customer might be an entity and we might have many customer records and a merchandise uh, item might be uh, an entity. Uh, attributes are characteristics that we're interested in tracking. So here we see an example of uh, several different uh, entities along with their attributes. Let's take one, customer, and we have as attributes for that entity customer, and again a, a, an entity is a collection of records about some object, event, or place, or other entity of interest. So the attributes are things we are interested in tracking. Well, their first name, their last name, their address, their phone number, their email, uh, and then we assign them a customer uh, number. So attributes can be a composite uh, identifier uh, or a, a composite attribute and that's an attribute that can be subdivided to yield uh, additional attributes. A single valued attribute has only a single value and multi-valued attributes may have many values. For example phone may have multiple values because you may have a 
home phone, a cell phone, and a work phone. <clears throat> so, there again, simple versus composite attributes, simple versus multi-valued, and stored versus derived. A derived attribute uh, is an attribute whose value is calculated from other values or from other attribute values. Um, and it's derived using some sort of algorithm. So if we had date of birth as one of our attributes and age as another, age would be derived from date of birth. So we derive it using an algorithm where we count the number of de uh, years and days since the date of birth. A composite attributes can be divided into smaller parts. Address is a common uh, example of a composite attribute. It can have street, city, state, and zip code. So it can be subdivided into those parts. Attributes that are not divisible into subparts are called simple attributes. And here we see a graphic of the composite attribute address and how it can be divided into multiple uh, other attributes. <clears throat> Um, again, phone numbers are a common example of a multi-valued attribute. Most people have more than one phone uh, number. So a single-valued attribute means having only a single value uh, for each attribute at any given time. Um, on the other hand, a multi-valued attribute, uh, you can have more than one uh, value. So relational databases do not allow multi-valued attributes because they can cause problems. Um, it makes the database processing much more complex and prone to error if you allow something like that. <clears throat> um, and it will slow down searching and you don't want that in a production database. And it can confuse the meaning of the data in a database. Um, a derived attribute is one that uh, you use uh, another attribute and you calculate some function using that other attribute to um, come up with the derived attribute. And of course the common example for that is a person's age. If you store the date of birth it's redundant to keep their age in there. This causes uh, several problems in that <clears throat> Um, if you store a person's age, you have to continually go in and update that field because it's always going to be changing. Um, so it's more efficient not to store derived attributes, but instead derive them when the person needs them, when the customer needs them, and derive them using the uh, base attribute, a, uh, the date of birth in this case. A null attribute means you have no value for an attribute. So um, if a, an attribute is not required, then it may be null valued. In other words, you may put in a null indicating that we don't have a value for it at this time. So there's two common notations uh, for uh, drawing our entity relationship diagrams. One is the Chen model, and the other is the information engineering model uh, that was developed by James Martin. The Chen model uses rectangles to represent entities, and attributes are expressed in ovals, and you'll have lines between them. So here's an example of the Chen notation, where you have customer, and then you have a variety of ovals um, with the attributes for the entity customer, and you have lines connecting the attribute to the entity 
so you know which entity these attributes are associated with. <clears throat> so uh, relationships are an association between entities and they always operate in both directions. So participants of a relationship are the entities that participate in a relationship. Connectivity describes the uh, entity relationship classification and cardinality expresses the minimum and maximum number of entity occurrences associated with one occurrence of the related entity. So there's three basic types of cardinality, one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. So, for example, using the university, there's one department chair, two department. There's um, one department to many students. So in other words, a department will have many students but a student will belong to only one department as part of their major. And you may have a many-to-many -many relationship. And this, an example of this might be between an entity classes and an entity students. One student may have many classes, and likewise one class can have many students. <clears throat> So the notation we use for uh, relationships is a diamond. Um, and they'll have arrows uh, from the diamond to the entities that it is um, uh, that are participating in that relationship. So here's the notation for a one-to-one. -one. We have um, a one on the uh, entity on the left side and a one on with, uh, with the entity on the right side. <clears throat> so manages, you're going to have one manager of a store and a store will have one managers. So one employee will manage one store and a store will have one manager. Here's an example of a one-to-many relationship between two entities, in this case, customer and order. So one customer may have many orders, but one order will only be from one customer. We also have, and we'll get to this in a little bit, but you can see here also a many-to-many -many relationship. So a uh, inventory item can be uh, referenced in many orders and likewise an order may have many inventory items. So order to item is a many to many relationship. Many to many relationships um, means that each participant can be re related to zero, one or more instances of the other entity. <clears throat> so, uh, we also have something known as weak entities. And a weak entity is one that is dependent on other entities. So, um, an order could not exist in the database without a customer. So, we might say order is a weak entity because it depends on customer. In other words, there's a mandatory uh, relationship between an order and a customer. And the uh, notation for that is a double-bordered rectangle. So, relational databases do not handle many-to-many -many relationships. So what we have to do is decompose that many-to-many -many relationship into a one to, into two one to many relationships. So as an example, um, 
we have a many-to-many -many relationship between an item and an order. Um, an order can, can contain many items, um, and over time, the uh, same product item can appear on many orders. <clears throat> so, um, we uh, take something uh, uh, and we put it in between the uh, order and the item. And that thing we put in between is known as a junction table or an association table. Um, or it's represented here as a relationship, but that relationship will be implemented as a uh, table. So what we have is we've taken the relationship, the many-to-many -many between order and items, and we've created a relationship called line item. And between an order and a line item, it's one-to-many. An order may have many line items, but a line item is specific to one order. Then there's also, line item also has the same type of relationship with item. An item may be on many different line items, but each line item is for only one item. So we've broken the many-to-many -many relationship into two one-to-many relationships by putting an association uh, or junction table between them. <clears throat> So uh, we denote uh, cardinality, and again, this is the one-to-many, many-to-many, or one-to-one, -one, with the designation of a one and an M, or an N. So you can also have an N to an M for a many-to-many -many type of relationship, as shown in this diagram uh, in figure C.8. Once we complete the empty relationship diagram, we can translate, and we use this to uh, talk with our customers. Uh, it's at a conceptual level, and so we're just talking in business terms what an entity is. Well, we've got this entity customers, and we're going to be tracking um, the name and address and the phone number of the customer. The business people can understand it at that level. Uh, but we as an analyst, then, once we've got this entity relationship diagram completed at a conceptual level, we'll then start working to form a logical schema where we translate the uh, concepts into logical data types. So, for instance, a customer name might be a text field, and it might be limited to 30 characters, say and the customer's date of birth would be a date field, and the customer's uh, um, address would be, again, a uh, text field, and an employee's salary would be uh, a numeric field. So we take the concepts, customer name, employee salary, and we map them into data types, okay, text and number. <clears throat> Most of the database installations uh, today are relational, but there is a new uh, type of database, the NoSQL database, that is becoming very popular as well. And it's because it scales to very large um, volumes. So, um, when we start mapping from our entity relationship got diagram into a database, we're going to be uh, taking entities and changing them into tables. So the word table is used synonymously with entity. Um, and the definition specifies what will be contained in each column of the table. But it doesn't include the data. So we're going to say that the uh, table for customer has a field called name, a field called address, 
and uh, a field called uh, date of birth. So here's an example of when rows of data are included, an instance of a relation is created. <clears throat> so we've got um, for our customer table, or in other words, we take the customer entity and we're going to create a table in our database. And we'll be seeing how to create a table in Access um, in a, another lecture. So we take at each entity and we create a table with that name. So customer entity, we create a table in Access called customer. Then for the attributes of the entity, we create fields in our table. So in Access in our customer table, we would create a customer number, a customer first name, a customer last name field, and then a customer phone number field. So when the same uh, column name appears in more than one table, and tables that contain the column are used in the same data manipulation operation, we have to qualify uh, the name. So for example, if we had um, uh, in a, a, an instructor table and an instructor ID and a student table and a student field called ID, if we were going to have an advisor relationship between instructor and student, we, we couldn't base it, we couldn't um, just say ID equals ID because we would the database management system would not know what to do. It would be confused because there's two fields with the name ID. So we have to qualify it with instructor dot ID equals student dot ID. <clears throat> a row or record in a relationship has the following properties. Now, I'm sorry, a row in a table has the following properties. Only one value at the intersection of a column and row. So in other words, we do not allow multi-valued attributes. As we mentioned, multiple phone numbers have to be put in their own table rather than in a field within a table. Uniqueness. No duplicate rows are allowed. We have to be able to uniquely get a customer's record. There can't be two customer records for the same customer. We wouldn't know which one to update. So we have what's known as a primary key. A primary key is a group of fields or just one field that uniquely identifies a given record or entity in a table. Um, the unique primary key makes it uh, possible to uniquely identify every row in a table. So there's three pieces of information uh, that we need to retrieve any specific bit of data. The name of the table, the name of the column, and the key, the primary key of the row. So the proper notation to use when documenting the name of the table, the column name, and the primary key are things like this notation here. Customer in all caps is the name of the table. Then in parens, we have the fields for the customer. Customer number underlined indicates that it's the primary key. Comma, first name, first name not being underlined means that it's just an attribute as is last name, as is phone number. So primary keys have two important qualities. The primary key should never change. And um, the primary key cannot be null. So here are some identifiers 
that represent relationships between uh, entities. So item number down in the bottom left right here um, is a key in the item table. And an item number will uniquely identify a, a product in our inventory. So in this case, it's the movie Iron Man 2. Then likewise for customer, we've got um, the customer number uniquely identifies a customer. So 1111 uh, is the unique identifier for Sam Smith. Our orders likewise have primary keys and they also have a foreign key. So a customer is going to be one of the fields in our order. So we know what customer the order belongs to. Line items, the order number and the line item number combine together to form the key for our line item table. And we see that represented in this diagram, figure C.10. <clears throat> so, um, we have to logically relate tables. It's important that each table be about one specific theme. So customer table should be about customers. Um, department table should be about departments. Instructor table about instructors. And student table about students. Class table about classes. But we're going to want to get uh, information that is in multiple tables. So we want to get um, the department information about a particular student. So that means we have to logically relate the student table to this other table, in this case department, for example. Or we have to logically relate uh, a record in the customer table to a record in the order table. Foreign keys are how we do that. Uh, a primary key of one table appears as an attribute in another table. So in this case, customer's uh, customer number, which is its primary key, is added as part of the uh, set of attributes in the order table. And that becomes a foreign key. <clears throat> So, um, the uh, employee number is also uh, an example where we've got a primary key for our employee, but the employee also has a department name, and that's going to be a foreign key so that we can use that to go to a department record in the department table and find department information about the employee. Likewise, the manager number is going to take us to a manager table and we can find out who the employee's manager is and information about them, like perhaps their phone number. Okay, so this is our uh, brief introduction into uh, database design. In uh, future lectures, we're going to have for our tech plugins uh, examples of how we actually do this in Microsoft Access. So first, we're going to learn the uh, how we actually do things in Microsoft Access, and then we'll uh, apply uh, those uh, learning uh, concepts to designing a database in Microsoft Access. Thank you.